Hey guys, what's up? So I want to talk about Daniel's 70 weeks and uh, try to point out some error here. I've been going over some MP3s that I have saved, a lot of them, uh, people who I've marked as false teachers, and I'm looking specifically at when they have mentioned Daniel's 70 weeks, and a lot of them are futurists like I used to be. And uh, I want to specifically look at Sam Adams here. Um, and Sam Adams is, I haven't said a lot about him, but he's a post-trib believer, so he believes that the rapture comes after this physical, literal thousand-year reign of Christ on the earth and uh, all the other doctrines that go with the, the futurist, you know, system. And they're all false. Okay, so whether a person's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, or post-millennial, they're all futurist, and most of them would probably agree with this interpretation of Daniel's 70 weeks. Um, and, of course, you know, uh, people who would go against their interpretation of Daniel's 70 weeks, their false interpretation, they're going to usually claim that the person's a preterist, and, you know, that's not necessarily so, okay? Uh, there's a lot that's wrong with preterism, uh, saying that, you know, all prophecy was fulfilled in the past. Um, that's not me, okay? Um, some of it, yes, but... Uh, you know, when it comes to Revelation, I'm an idealist. The book of Revelation is a symbolic book. It doesn't just uh, talk about events that happened in the past. Um, but I don't want to go into a lot of that anyways. But uh, So, just, just try to understand, listen, pay attention, try to consider what I'm saying, and I'm going to try to explain it the best that I can. And let's just listen to this clip from Sam Adams. Okay, he's going to start reading from Daniel 9.26. Okay, here we go. Back to Daniel 9, verse 26. After three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. The people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This talks about the prince that shall come. This is not a reference to Christ. Okay, now I want to make note that he says this talks about the prince that shall come. Okay, so let's, where does he get that idea from? Um, the prince that shall come. Well, he gets it from Daniel 9.26 where it says the prince that shall come. Okay, I'm going to underline this in blue. He says this talks about the prince that shall come, and he says this is not Christ. Okay. As others have imagined, including the pre many preterists of our day. And see, he says so preterists. This prince that shall come is talking about Christ. But this is instead a reference to that man of sin. Son of prediction, the Antichrist. This, this is the prince that shall come after Messiah has been cut off, but not for himself, put to death to bring in everlasting righteousness. This prince that shall come comes after the Messiah. And we see it, by the way, also here. He's going to be a prince with connections directly to Rome. The people of the prince that shall come. Okay, so he just keeps saying the prince that shall come. He says this isn't Christ. He says this is after Messiah is cut off because... Daniel 9.26 and after Daniel 9.26 says, And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, and not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come. So he says, This prince that shall come comes after Messiah is cut off. Well, I want to go through here and let's look at uh, this whole passage in context, Daniel 9.24 through 27, because this is speaking of Daniel's 70 weeks. This is basically when it starts here, Daniel 9.24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. So this is where this whole thing starts here. Uh, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Okay. So, so far, the only person that's mentioned is the most holy. Who is who? Jesus Christ. Most people would agree with that. Okay. So Christ is mentioned in verse 24. Know therefore and understand 
that from the going forth of the commandment to rebuild or to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince. Who is this? This is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, the Prince, the Prince of Peace. Okay. So most people, again, would agree with this. The most holy, speaking of Christ, the Messiah, the Prince, speaking of Christ, the only person who's mentioned so far at all. Shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks and the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And I'm not going to go through and explain, you know, this whole, I'm not trying to give like an expository on everything here. I'm just trying to get one point across. So that will be for other studies in the future. Uh, but the only person spoken of so far is Jesus Christ. He's the most holy. He is the Messiah. He is the Prince. Okay. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah again. Who is this? Jesus. Okay. Again. Shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Himself. Who? Uh, again. Let's set up a little better. It's a reference to Jesus, the Messiah, the Prince, the Most Holy. And the people of the prince that shall come. Oh, so this is the prince that shall come after um, Messiah is cut off, is what Sam Adams and many others might say. Okay, the prince that shall come, shall the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined, and he so shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And they'll say, well, this he is referencing back to this prince that shall come. Okay. This he is referencing back to this, the prince that shall come. And uh, uh, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do this here. Let's just say that. Uh, let's fill, fill this solid color. Let's do this the same color here. Let's just say that. Sorry, this might be a little confusing here for a second. Let's try to keep in mind what I've been saying here. Okay, so, oops, let's put that wrong. So this is false. The blue is false. This is basically what Dan, Sam Adams and others have been saying, though, is that the, the what I've done in the blue is true, that the blue is a different person. What's in the red boxes is Christ, the Messiah, the Most Holy, the Prince, himself it's all speaking of christ until we get to hear the prince that shall come and um and the he refers back to him and then i'll add this too um let's see here let's see here. futurists say is the anti Christ. Okay. Um, so there's that. Okay, so I hope you can understand this here. So what's in the blue is what the futurists say is the Antichrist. This prince that shall come, he's the Antichrist, and the Antichrist shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Oh, I forgot there's another he. Let's see, let's get this right. Okay, so there's another he uh, for the overspreading of abominations. He, again, they would say, this is speaking of the Antichrist. I did that a little too close. Okay. So there's one more. I miss that should be all of them. Oh, there's another he. Okay, he. Okay. So, did I get it all right this time? Yes. Okay, so there we go. Now we go back to the red color. Stay with me, guys. Okay. So the red, most would agree, is Jesus Christ. And then the futurists say that when it comes to the prince that shall come, this is speaking of the Antichrist. Uh, the Antichrist people shall destroy the city of the sanctuary, and the then shall there be with a flood. Okay. And then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many. He shall cause the sacrifice, sacrifice of the oblation to cease. Um, the Antichrist, he shall make it desolate, the Antichrist. Okay. 
here's where they're wrong. Okay, first of all, um, how do I want to do this? Let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Let's just do this in... Okay. Let's do this in green. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay, so after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come. Okay, now who's going to come? The people of the prince. Okay, now here's the phrase that we need to be looking at. Okay. Oh, come on. Why did it do that? There we go. Okay. So it's the people of the prince that shall come. It's the people that shall come. The people who are of the prince that shall come. Okay. It's not the prince that shall come. It's the people that shall come. And those people are of the prince. And who is the prince? Who is the prince? That is... A I don't want to do it like that. Okay, you already know where I'm going with this, but uh, we need to do outline, no no fill. Okay, no no fill. Wait, outline, solid color. Okay, the people of the prince. How do we know that this prince is Jesus? Because it already said he was, the Messiah, the prince. Okay, this is the only person who has been spoken of this whole time, is Jesus. Okay, but not for himself. And the people of the prince are the ones that shall come and shall destroy the city. The people that shall come and shall destroy the city. And those people are sent by God as instruments of judgment upon Jerusalem. Okay. The people of the prince, the Messiah, the prince. Okay, and so then it follows through, again, the only person that's been spoken of is Jesus. So he, Jesus, shall confirm the covenant, which he did. Okay, he came and he confirmed the new covenant. Okay, and he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, because he was the final sacrifice. Okay, so spiritually, you know, there's there's no more need for you know you know the old covenant is gone it's about the new covenant and um and then physically in a future sense when the temple was actually destroyed and stuff they they stopped to have having sacrifices but you know spirit so this is spiritual and physical and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate okay god brought judgment upon jerusalem Jerusalem and the temple was destroyed, okay, in 70 AD. We know the temple is destroyed. It has been for a long time, okay? This is prophecy that was fulfilled, okay? They're trying to say that this is some future Antichrist who's coming, and this stuff all happens in the future, and this destroys all this pro prophecy about Christ, okay? So it's crazy, uh, but I hope that you try to try to see what, what I'm, you can see what I'm saying here. Um, I'm not sure if there's any more reason to play any more of Sam Adams' clip. Um, he goes on some other rants about the Romans and uh, the Americans and whatever. But uh, this is all prophecy about Jesus. Okay, so the problem is when people focus on this phrase, the prince that shall come. It's not the prince that shall come. It's the people of the prince that shall come. It's the people that shall come. The people who are of the prince that shall come. Okay, you see what I mean? I don't know how exactly else to, to explain that. Okay. The people who are of the prince shall come. The people that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So that's that's where uh, they mess it up there, and not to mention also that uh, futurists teach that there is a huge gap of two thousand plus years between 
uh, the 69th week of Daniel and the 70th week, which is not spoken of here at all. Um, it's totally made up nonsense. There is no gap. This has already all been fulfilled. And there's no, no new person spoken of here, okay? It's already been mentioned that the prince, the Messiah and the prince, that's, that's speaking of one person, two different titles, okay, for Jesus Christ. We know that. So again, he says down here, the prince, uh, you know, he would be pretty confusing if he's not really specifying any, any difference here, okay? But that's where they try to come in and they try to say, here is the difference. It's the prince that shall come. But again, they're missing that it's the people that shall come. The people who are of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city. So God is sent, God sent people as instruments of judgment upon Jerusalem. And that did happen. It already has happened. And praise the Lord. This was all prophesied of. It all came true. Um, you know, so these futurists are destroying Bible prophecy. Okay. And I understand that people are deceived. People are confused about this because I was. But, you know, I hope that more of us can can get the correct understanding of this and, and spread this to help others because uh they totally just twist revelation all up the futurist interpretation and many other things and i think that this um you know if you can see anything that i've tried to refute uh, and and the system of futurism you know which i'll be doing a lot and lot more of but um, you should just see that it should just crumble. I hope that just something, you know, when I show that there's no physical, literal thousand-year reign of Christ on earth, I hope maybe, you know, somebody will, will realize that and they'll say, wow, this, this isn't true. There is no future physical, literal thousand-year kingdom. Or when I say, you know, the rapture isn't true and it's, it's actually speaking of the resurrection, uh, you know, I hope that somebody will say, well, well, well yeah, this is speaking of the resurrection. Uh, you know, the rapture is a lie, or when I'm speaking of the the future bodily resurrection that futurists teach, or, or any of the other things, or this, even speaking of this passage in, in Daniel 9, you know, I hope that something clicks, and it's going to be like a, a set of dominoes. This is what's happened for me. You know, I realize that this false judgment seat of Christ, this judgment where only Christians are judged, is false. Okay, everybody's judged we're either judged as saved or as lost and we're judged at the moment that we die okay that's that's all there is to it christians don't have to suffer in heaven we're not going to suffer loss of reward okay if we're saved it's because of what christ did it's because of our faith in him okay and our and submitting to him um so that judgment seat of Christ stuff was false, and that's like connected with the rapture. So then I had to examine the rapture more, and things just, the whole system crumbles, folks, because it's a lie. And a lot of it did come from Schofield, unfortunately. I think that is the source of a lot of it. And, uh, you know, there's all these wars back and forth between pre-trib and post-trib, etc., and they, they're missing the bigger picture, that it's all false, and the whole system needs to be dropped, okay? And I'm not saying to be a preterist because there's a lot that's wrong with preterism, okay? So I'm not saying that I'm a preterist, even though that's what somebody would call me. Just like Sam Adams said, if you claim that Daniel 9.26, when it mentions the prince, it's talking about Christ. If you deny that it's speaking of Antichrist, which the futurists teach, then you're labeled as a preterist, okay? But they don't really have an understanding, apparently, of what preterism is, and they don't have an understanding of interpretation of the bible so that's it it's the people that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary okay and the people are sent of the prince and the prince is who the messiah the prince verse 25 okay so ah uh, Thank you guys. There will be a lot more on this, and I'll, I'll try to get better and better at explaining what I'm trying to teach. But hope this helped. God bless.